very quickly with Holly and then um, people can, can bring in questions as they want to. I guess the, the first thing which which struck me was uh, yeah, how how did you end up making a movie and Google it? Where, where did the story come from? Um, neither myself or Catherine are South African, but she knew uh, Joe Matkoff, who was the director of the Salisbury International Arts Festival. They had worked together before, um, and Joe rang up Catherine one day uh, in early 2008, no, 2007, and said, I've got 77 kids coming from this township next year to perform in my festival. She said, I think it's going to be a fantastic couple of weeks for them, and it will probably make a great film. Catherine and I had wanted to work together for a while, and we never had. Neither of us had made a film, this is our first film. Um, and she took the idea to me, we both loved the idea. Uh, but of course, you know, what's good on paper isn't necessarily great on film. Um, so we, I think, in a matter of weeks, two or three weeks, we put some money together, bought some equipment, the camera, the microphone, a couple of plane tickets, um, and we went to Cape Town to meet Pumi, to meet the kids, and just to see if there really was a film to be made. And there was. <laughs> I mean, it, it struck me looking at some of those shots. I, I was kind of thinking, I know that road. I, I wouldn't be using the camera there. Um, and I, I wanted mm -hmm. just to ask about some of the personal challenges and professional challenges that you faced making the movie in that context where you, where you weren't familiar with it and what were some of the things that helped you out. Um, I wasn't unfamiliar with Cape Town. I had lived there previously. Um, in my early 20s, I was a backpacker. <laughs> um, and had traveled all over the country and had lived predominantly in Cape Town. But I didn't know the townships. Um, I had never really ventured into the townships. Um, but Catherine had also lived in West Africa, so we were both very comfortable in Africa. Um, and we were careful. Uh, we, you know, we weren't stupid. We weren't in the township at night. But when we went filming in the, you know, around the streets or whatever, we always had a couple of the biggest boys we could find at school come with us. Or Pumi, who everyone knows is Pumi in the community, so cars would constantly stop and say hello to him. It's you know previous pupils, so we always felt very safe. Uh, we were, most of our filming was inside the school or inside a child's house, um, and we were very safe in both of those places. Uh, we gained the trust of Pumi and that choir quite quickly. Uh, which meant that they really looked out for us. Um, so yeah, we were just we were cautious, but we weren't scared ever. No. How did you pick out the characters once you arrived in that situation? Um, well, the personalities of the kids really did shine through quite quickly, um, particularly the three that we we chose. But our first shoot in 2007, we did interview properly about 12, maybe 15 of the kids. And the ones who you would think would be great on camera, who were very, very outgoing on the playground, really kind of climbed up on the cameras in their face. Um, so that, you know, that helped us out with, with a few of them. Um, it was just spending time with them, um, that's all. Uh, and there's actually the edit that you could really see their personality through. Um, and so it was, you know, by some sheer luck that three of the most gifted singers were also three of the most entertaining and charming of the kids. So yeah, we were very lucky. We were very lucky. Are there any other questions that people would like to ask? I'd like to know, Holly, what's your background? Where, where are you from? Uh, my back, well, professionally. Both, yeah. Um, I'm English, but I grew up uh, in America. Um, and professionally, I've been working in television for many, many years, um, almost 10 years as an editor. So I edit television and factual television documentaries. Um, so that was really the only bit of this process that I was okay with or, or was comfortable with. Um, directing, I sort of, I managed it because I knew editing. So I, I could sort of foresee scenes in my head of, you know, as I was shooting them, I was quite fortunate in that way. Camera, I had shot a little bit, but really not very much. And sound, I had never done sound in my life. I, learned, I read the manual on the plane, <laughs> on the way to Cater. Um, and, you know, luckily I was the editor, which meant I cut out all my terrible camera work and terrible sound. <laughs> a little bit of stuff. Um, and, yeah, I, I think 
I mean, I knew that I had always wanted to make my own films. Um, I had come to a point where I was done cutting other people's, uh, and I was very, very fortunate that this incredible story sort of landed pretty much in my lap. Uh, but it was very, very hard going. You know, we were first time filmmakers, we didn't have any funding at all to begin with, nothing. Um, and that carried on for quite a lot of the production and post-production. We, we did get um, decent investment from Corniche right at the end of edit, but you know, that was two years in. So it was a real hand-to-mouth situation. Um, it was hairy. And yeah, but there was, there really was never a moment that we thought that we wouldn't finish it. I never thought that we wouldn't finish it. Um, I wasn't sure how we were going to finish it, but I just knew that we would. So, and we did, I guess. Any other question? Do you still have a connection with the school? Yes, um, we've got a connection insofar as we did really build uh, genuinely good relationships with Pumi and those kids. Um, we're still in touch with them. Um, all the kids are obsessed with Facebook, so which means they're all on my Facebook. <laughs> so I never stop hearing from them. Um, and also, of course, we are connected to them by the scholarship fund. Uh, it's not our charity. We did not start that charity. It's a charity that was begun by the uh, Salisbury Community Choir before we showed up. Uh, but of course, a film can be the most powerful way to engage an audience with a story, to engage them with, uh, you know, characters or children or whoever they're watching. Um, and we knew that we had a chance to help them raise a significant amount of money uh, through the screenings of this film. Uh, and that, that is what we're beginning to do. It, it's slow, but it is happening. Um, we're getting, you know, very kind donations from the public. Uh, audiences from our screenings are giving, uh, sometimes quite phenomenally. Um, and when we go to profit, a 50% of our profit will go to the scholarship fund. You told us earlier about the impact it has in South Africa itself, that was now on television and so on. Can you tell us about that? Well, we, uh, we premiered this film in 2009 in Soweto, actually. We were a part of a film festival that toured South Africa. Uh, so, of course, when it came to Cape Town, it was a very big deal because all of the kids came and saw themselves on the big screen, which was a very, very special day. Um, <laughs> and so I think that they really got a lot out of seeing this story in a real cinema. Um, and we most recently have sold it to South African television. It's been on repeatedly. They never stopped showing it. Um, and the kids are getting a huge kick out of being minor celebrities. <laughs> uh, they love it. They absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, I think I think you know it's it's done wonders. I mean, being a part of the choir does wonders for their self-esteem. Um, you know, England, this film. Yes, those were fantastic milestones as well, but really it's the consistent participation within that choir and the success of that choir which really helps to shape them and, and, and build their confidence. I wondered how big the school was, because all those extraordinary voices are so mature to come from one school seem normal. Well, not everyone in the choir can sing. Um, there is actually an open door policy to the choir, which is Pumi has made it clear to everyone that if you want to be in the choir, regardless of your talent, you are in it. Um, as long as you're a member of that high school. He does get requests from children who don't even attend that high school. Um, but, so I, I'd say a quarter of that choir can't not sing at all. Uh, but luckily, I mean it's a big school, there's about a thousand kids in that school. Um, and you know the ones who are gifted, and there is a you know there is a phenomenal uh, tradition of, of singing talent in South Africa. Um, it, I mean you know singing is big, uh, so it's not that difficult for him to find you know fresh voices. But the ones who are gifted sort of really do carry carry the rest of them, and he knows that for the kids who maybe aren't gifted or cannot really sing, who might be vulnerable. Um, he knows that, he knows exactly what he's doing. He uses that choir as a space for them to be with other children, be off the streets after school, be in a safe space till six um, every evening, you know, travel to competitions, be part of a winning team, you know, being a part of those winning teams. They're national champions uh, for Zekar High School Choir. Um, and, you know, when they win those competitions, every child, no matter if they can sing or not, feels it. 
uh, and they, they carry that forward in their life. They want to feel that more, um, which is why they've got such a good success rate um, for children going on to higher education from the choir. You said that <coughs> you said earlier that uh, this is actually going to be shown in the first hour rooms. But is that for one of Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> We're always one of them. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, I was just knocked out by that film. I mean, uh, um, I'm working on opera, yeah. and I was impressed, very, very impressed with a lot of it. And I'm just want to run back now and tell a lot of my friends to come and see it. Um, well, I mean, uh, you know. Um, it's really hard to get distribution for a small independent film by first time filmmakers. It's really difficult. Uh, you know, it's really thanks to Catherine um, and her vision. She really thinks outside the box when it comes to distribution, thank God, which means that we have had successful screenings. Uh, we have been theatrically released um, in London, really. Um, but, you know, the, the nature of this film means that if you want to put on a screening, uh, you can, you know, we will license the film and, and we will set, you know, a licensing fee according to who you are. So if you're doing it in your church hall, come and talk to us and we'd be happy to give you a copy of the film and... Well, in fact, the church, my church will be very interesting because <laughs> I've got many friends in the church hall and are professional singers and great opera fans. Right. Um, but I also, as I say, I work at the Opera House, the yeah. Opera House, and... Uh, yeah, I'm going to have a look at some people there. Uh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask about two boys that didn't get to England? Yeah. That was heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. I know. How they managed? Um, well, that was, of course, a storyline we did not see coming. Um, Catherine and I had done one week's filming in 2007, which was our initial. <coughs> sort of recce shoot and then we went back in May 2008 to be with them for the five weeks in the run up to their departure. As soon as we got to South Africa, Pumi pulls us aside and says you cannot believe what's going on and tells us that all the kids had put in their applications for passport well in advance, well in good time and for some twisted reason there had been a flood or something in the department at home affairs and a few of their applications were destroyed no one really bothered to tell them uh then you know and these two boys their problem essentially was that they didn't have birth certificates which meant they couldn't get id id numbers and use an id number to get a passport so most of the kids already had their id numbers so that was the hurt it wasn't getting the passport it was getting the id number i cannot describe it's like wading through treacle, trying to trying to sort it. Uh, I mean, it was just never ending. Um, we tried to pull in babies from here. Catherine like went to the governmental levels here, South Africa. Um, I think we tried to reopen Tutu at one point, but you know, I mean, it was just. It, it, what, what was frustrating was we couldn't really convey to the officials at Home Affairs the importance of this trip. They didn't really seem to get it or engage with us, um, you know, there seemed to be absolutely no urgency. Um, and, you know, that was very difficult, particularly with Peter, who is their star soloist. I mean, he is really, really a gifted tenor. So to watch him being left behind was unbearable. Um, because he knew it was a potentially once in a lifetime, you know, the, the, you know, it's very, very probable that many of these children will not go abroad again. Um, so yeah, that was very, very difficult for us to, to watch. That was actually my hardest day on the shoot uh, was, apart from Wales, of course, uh, was watching them tell Peter that he wouldn't be going. But of course, you know, he was one of the first recipients of the scholarship fund and he is, his UCT course is being paid for and he's thriving at UCT, he loves it. Um, he's, you know, um, singing in their productions. He will go abroad for sure. He's very gifted. One last question. How was it funded? Where did the money come from? To get them to fly England. these children over here? Don't ask me. It had nothing to do with me. Okay. Um, it was all Jo, um, who ran the festival. She yeah. really pulled some miracles to make it happen. Um, we really want to sell this to television. 
and we, our fear is that if we release the DVD, we won't be as attractive. So we literally, every couple of months, think, right, we're doing it, and then someone, we get a lead at a, you know, either in the US or here, we think, we better hold off. So the best thing to do is to join our mailing list um, on our website, and all of our future screenings and the DVD release, all of our news, um, we send out newsletters sort of every six or eight weeks. Um, so yeah, you will find out. <laughs> that way. When we heard opera on the soundtrack, was that all the school choir? Uh, the one, the one piece of opera what, with, with the mountain in the background, and that was uh, that was Renee Fleming. <laughs> that wasn't the kids. Uh, that was you know a world class soprano. Um, I, I put that in because he was talking about how they have responded so well to German and Italian and really do sing it as if it is their native language, um, even though they do sometimes struggle with Afrikaans and sometimes even English. Um, and I thought that was a you know a good moment to bring in you know the best of the best because um, that is what they aspire to. You know they listen to they listen to you know the great you know tenors and sopranos the way. Other kids listen to, you know, Beyonce. Although they also listen to Beyonce, um, but they they have a great appreciation for the classics and for opera, and that really is thanks to Pumi. He does um, expose them to that uh, quite consciously, and and they have grown a genuine love for it as a result. Thank you so much, Mummy, for sharing some of that with us. And just a closing off, I just wanted to make an appeal on behalf of that school. It's a place where I've spent a lot of time. And I think, as you can see from the movie, it's it's not an easy place to grow up. But I think when you walk through the doors of Fazeka, it's one of the few places where children in that, in that community and in the broader Cape Flats community feel safe and believe that they're going to become somebody bigger. And so I think it, it's boring, but you need algebra as well as you need the music, and you need university if you're going, you know, if you're going to continue to make a, a career later in life. And so, I think one of the most worthwhile things you can take from this movie is even a small contribution to the scholarship fund. And I think it's fantastic what you guys are doing to try and take that story. Um, it's been really inspiring. Thank you so much, Tan, and to the organizers of the of the festival, to Holly for coming, and to all of you for coming.